What's up guys and welcome to my Apple Card unboxing video. Let's get straight to the unboxing. As you can see, this is my wife's card, not mine. Just wanted to get that out of the way. The reason is I'm under 524 right now and wanna keep it that way for a little while. So right off the bat, the card feel is very nice and solid and looks super clean. It's made out of very sturdy titanium with matte white finish on the front and the back. There are no credit card numbers and it almost looks more like a piece of tech hardware than a credit card. On the front of the card, there's only the name laser etched on the card the Apple logo and the chip. On the back, you'll see the magnetic stripe and the Goldman Sachs and MasterCard logos, which are the issuing bank and the card provider for this card. I have other metal cards, the heaviest of which is the stainless steel Amex Platinum card. So let's do some metal card comparisons. First, the sound of the card hitting a table. You know, that flex sound when you are at a restaurant or something. So this is the sound of the Amex Platinum hitting the wooden table. And here is the sound of the Apple card hitting the wooden table. Now let's compare the weight of these cards. The Amex Platinum definitely feels heavier in the hand and it comes in at 0.67 of an ounce. The titanium Apple card weighs just over half an ounce. That's just a little bit heavier than the Chase Sapphire Reserve metal card. This is the wallet I use now and have been using for the last 10 years or so. It's the simple Louis Vuitton pocket organizer. And in it, I have my business Amex Platinum, the City Prestige, which earns me 5X on dining purchases, the Chase Freedom card for the 5X on gas stations this quarter, and outside here, I had the Chase Freedom Unlimited to earn 1.5X on non-bonus categories. But for now, I'll just put the Apple card here. It's the same size as any other card, so it fits nicely. My concern here is the wear and tear on the card. Given that it's white, I wonder if it will get discolored over time. I won't really have to worry about that because I probably won't put a single purchase on this card. I'll explain why in a minute. First, let's activate the card. So just like a pair of AirPods or something, you just wake your iPhone, place it next to the card, and it will come up automatically. And click on activate, and that's it. Pretty, pretty cool. One thing I want to show you and I'll use Apple's video for is how to get your card number if you want to use it to buy something online, for example. You just go to your wallet app, tap on the Apple card, tap the three dots button, then tap on card information. Actually, let me show you a couple more things. How to apply for the card. It's very quick and easy. You open your wallet app, click the plus button on top, and tap the Apple card. You'll enter some personal info like your birthday and last four of your social. It also asks me to scan the front and back of a photo ID and I was done. The app features for the Apple card are very intuitive as to where to see your transactions and paying off your card. It's pretty easy to use just like everything Apple. As far as the benefits of this card, they're pretty simple. You earn 1% cash back on anything and everything when you use the physical Apple card. You'll earn 2% cash back on any purchase you make with the card using Apple Pay. And finally, you'll earn 3% back on Apple purchases. There's no sugar coating this. These are terrible and useless categories, especially when compared with other no annual fee cashback cards. The only difference is that the cashback posts on your Apple cash card daily, whereas generally speaking, other cards give you your cashback after every statement. I don't think that's a big deal at all. Plus, what is the point of the 3% cashback on Apple products? I mean, how much are you really going to spend on Apple to make this worth it? Even if you go out and buy a $15,000 iMac Pro, you'll earn $450 back. That's nothing compared to what you're spending. I'd rather earn 1.5x or 2x points with other cards on that same purchase. 
Speaking of other cards, let me tell you about a few no annual fee cashback cards that are a million times better than this card. First of which is the Chase Freedom Unlimited. Normally this card will earn 1.5% back on anything and everything, but right now the welcome bonus on the card is earning 3% back on everything for the first $20,000 you spend in your first year of having the card. That's incredible. After that, the card goes back to earning 1.5% on everything. Just to use the same $15,000 iMac example, that's still the same $450 in cashback, but if you have the Chase Sapphire Preferred or Chase Sapphire Reserve, you can convert the $450 to 45,000 Chase Ultimate Rewards points and use them for much higher value on travel purchases or transferring to airline and hotel partners. Another great cashback card is the City Double Cash Card. This is probably the simplest, most rewarding cashback card with no annual fee out there. You simply earn 1% cashback on all purchases and another 1% cashback when you pay your bill. You can even earn the full 2% when you only pay the minimum payment required. However, as always been the case on this channel, I highly recommend that you always pay your bills in full and on time. Unlike the Apple Card though, the City Double Cash has a 3% foreign transaction fee, so it's not worth it to use when you're traveling since you'll be losing 1% to that foreign transaction fee when you factor in the 2% cash back. So you'll be pretty much losing money if you use that card abroad. Next up is the Saver One card, which is the no annual fee version of the Capital One Saver Cash Rewards credit card. Now this card is great for those of you who spend significantly on dining and entertainment and grocery stores. The Saver One cashback card earns 3% at restaurants and entertainment like concerts, movie theaters, zoos, and many other things and it also earns 2% cash back at grocery stores. A cool benefit of this card is that it doesn't have foreign transaction fees. So this is a great alternative for the Apple credit card since it has no fees and it earns bonus cash back at much better and useful categories. The last card I want to add in the mix of these cash back cards that have no annual fees is the Uber Visa credit card. If you're someone looking for a card that just earns cash back and don't want to deal with points and transfer partners and all that stuff, then this card is amazing for you. It earns a whopping 4% cash back on dining like restaurants, takeout, bars, and even Uber Eats. So that's amazing right there. It also earns 3% cash back on hotels and airfare and vacation home rentals like Airbnb. The Uber Visa card also earns 2% cash back on Uber, online shopping, and video and music streaming services. So all your shopping on Amazon.com or any online shopping, also your Netflix subscription will earn you 2% cash back. And finally, you earn 1% on all other purchases. So with no annual fees and no foreign transaction fees, I don't see why you'd even consider the Apple card versus this Uber Visa card. As you can see guys, there's a ton of potential here for you to earn a lot of cash back from all these cards. Some are much better than others with higher cash back bonuses on certain categories. And all these cards have zero annual fees. Which brings me to another point. Given that all these cards have no annual fees, I don't see why you can't have more than one of them or even all of them. The only thing that should stop you from applying to any of these cards, especially the Apple card, is if you're under 524 and still didn't get some of Chase's best credit cards. Right now, the Chase Sapphire Preferred is offering 60,000 points after you spend $4,000 in the first three months. Now this card does have an annual fee and it's only $95, but it's far more rewarding than the no annual fee cards. Something to consider if you're interested in travel rewards rather than just pure cashback. Once you have a few of those cards and no longer care about your 524 status, then you can get whatever cards you want. And if you want the Apple credit card for the looks, then go for it. Otherwise, the Apple card doesn't really stack up to the competition in the fee-free cashback category. Let me know in the comments, what do you think about these cashback credit cards? Would you still get the Apple card and why? I personally think it's totally not worth it to use this card on anything. But Apple is known to disrupt markets and I'd be very interested to see what they'll do with Apple card 2.0 and 3.0 and whatever comes next if they'll have a welcome bonus, transfer partners, or maybe add unique bonus categories. We'll just have to wait and see. Thank you guys for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up. And if this is your first time here, I would love to have you subscribe because every week I'm publishing videos that help you earn a ton of credit card points and frequent flyer miles that will enable you to travel the world for little to no money.